Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the
reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. So how much Jesus do you need to be saved? This is a, basically the same question as how much Jesus do I need to be a Christian? Regardless of how the question is asked, it still is the wrong question. For when we ask the question, how much do you need, you are in the same way saying, how much of Jesus Christ do I not need? When we turn it into a numbers game, when we try to quantify these sorts of things, we put ourselves in control on top of Jesus, slicing out of him the things that we like and discarding the rest. We've been through Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and Easter, and soon we will continue to move forward through Ascension and Pentecost and the Sundays of after Pentecost as well. So which of these Jesuses do you like the best? There is a clue in your answer. To get Jesus wrong is simply to pull him apart from all the things that he does. Almost everyone has something nice to say about a part of Jesus, or at least a piece of him. You tell me about your Jesus, and I will tell you about my Jesus. How many Jesuses are there, you ask? Well, there are as many parts of Jesus. That's how many Jesuses there are. Which Jesus do you prefer? Maybe it is the Monday Thursday Jesus, or the Good Friday Jesus, or the Easter Jesus. Our preferences show, our, show which ones that we like based on what we want Jesus for. When I'm sad, I want a Jesus that's going to make me happy. When I've lost my job, I want a Jesus that's going to help me find another one. When class is hard and the professor is difficult, I want a Jesus to help me get through that as well. If my son or my daughter has gone astray, I want a Jesus that's going to be right there to pick them up and bring them back. When, I'm, when I am sick, I want a Jesus that is going to make me, make me well again. When I see a world that is in utter chaos, I want a Jesus that's going to bring things back to rights. When facing death, I want a Jesus that's going to get me through that as well. Now in each and every one of these, you see that Jesus seems to come in second. First is what I want him for, to fit him into the appropriate peace that Jesus may do for me. And if he doesn't deliver, then I'll move on to another piece of Jesus to see if that one will fit any better. To, then, to see then that we do not believe in Jesus is to confess that we have not been believing in Jesus all along and the peace of him that we have chosen. But this morning, St. Paul reminds us that without all of Jesus, 
Our preaching and truly our faith is in vain. This is what he has received, what he then goes to pass on, nothing more and nothing less. Nothing new, in fact, it is what the scriptures have been saying all the way through. Nothing invented by man. It is this and this alone that is the truth. This is what our found faith is founded upon, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. From his life to his death, to his burial, to his resurrection, all of Jesus is your Lord and all of Jesus is your Savior, not just the fractures of him that we like. And all of this is in accordance with the scriptures, as it all was foretold and all was done for you. That means all of your salvation has been achieved by him as a total savior giving you total redemption, totally delivering you out of the pits of hell, nothing but gift for you. For we are nothing but given to, and that is what faith is, given to through word, given to through sacrament, all continuing to strengthen you in the faith to life everlasting. And this is what our preaching is to be about as well, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And like Paul, it is only through God's grace that our preaching is not in vain. And so running with that, Christ says and does and gives. We have faith in his promise that he is the fruit, first fruits of those who have fallen asleep and like him then us after will arise to new life. Our eyes remain then fixed on him, on where his promise is, for he still gives himself and even more into you his child. Through the waters of your baptism, he is there giving you the promise of his and his, your father and his Holy Spirit. Through his holy word, he is there in you to open your hearts and your minds to understand the scriptures and the powers therein. In there, in he is there too through faith, forgiving you of all of your sins. Through his holy supper, he is in you just as you are wrapped up in him as well. With holy body and precious blood, they're gifting you with life and forgiveness and total salvation from this total Savior. So continue to take in lots of his word, for he is there for you to give himself to you. Receive the gifts of his blessed sacraments and pray. Pray that he continues to give to you faith like one of his little children through, through his Holy Spirit we may continue on in this world. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen.
I cry to you, O Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all day. Every day I will bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems your life from the pit. And crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Let us pray. O God, for our redemption you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, you gave your only Son to die for our sins, and to rise again for our justification. By your Holy Spirit, grant us newness of life, that through the power of Christ's resurrection, we may dwell with him forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you have kept me this life from all harm and danger, and I pray Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life.